Awesome. I gotta say, for all the speakers, try to get the last speaking spot. <laughs> the weather's much better up here. This is so comfortable now. <laughs> Yeah, so CryptoPoco Day, and I, I know what most people want. Just tell us, Jeff, which coin to buy so we become rich. <laughs> I know. You know, Raph's kind of right, and I've said this before too, that you know, so many people just want an easy sort of, just give me the name and I'll buy it. But you know what, even if you do, uh, if you don't know what's going on, the markets go like this all the time. There's tons of FUD, oh, this thing's going to zero, and then tons of of a uh, pump where they say, oh, this thing's gonna be the next Ethereum or whatever. And if you don't really know what's going on, when it goes down and you hear everyone's going, this thing's going to zero, you'll panic and you'll sell anyway. And I've heard that so much. So, like Raf said, you gotta just get educated. But you are here and you're, if, you, if you're just learning, you're, you're learning, so that's good. I first heard about Bitcoin at $3 in 2011. I was at Doug Casey's ranch in Argentina called Cafe, uh, La Estancia de Cafejate. And I was sitting around a campfire. There was a guy in there and he said, do you know what Bitcoin is? And you know, I remember two of, I remember another time when, when someone asked me something that I still remember to this day. And I was working at a bank in 1992, 1993. And a guy, and I remember exactly, his name was Ishmael from Eritrea, and he was a teller, and I was basically almost like a teller at the time. Uh, and uh, he said, do you hear about the internet? And I said, no, what is it? And he goes, they connected all the computers together. And I was like, I've been waiting my whole life for this. I actually had been a computer guy my whole life, uh, from like 12 years old in like 1982 on Apple II Pluses, I was a hacker. But by 1992, I'd become bored of it because I was like, you had to, like, for people who remember this, you had to use like dial up modem. It sounds like a fax machine. You had to call a guy's house, hope you can get on. You mostly get busy signals. And uh, once you get on, it's just like a message board. So you get on, it's like, respond to a message. How are you? Good. Hang up. <laughs> Call back in. Oh, it's busy. So I had actually put my computer, and the people who knew me at the time couldn't believe it. Jeff put his computer in the closet. And it was because I was like, oh, this is, I'm, there's nothing going on here. They got to connect these things together. And I knew that there was probably going to be a time when that happened, but I didn't know when. And so Ishmael said to me that day, do you know what the internet is? And I still remember that day. And I was at that campfire in 2011. And, uh, he said to me, have you heard of Bitcoin? I said, no, what is it? And he started to explain it. And you know, I was like, what? Doesn't make any, what? Sounds kind of crazy, kind of weird. Then Trace Mayer was there. Uh, anyone here know Trace Mayer? He's pretty well known in the crypto space. Yeah, quite a few people. Uh, he's one of the smartest guys around. He's actually completely disappeared because he's probably like a billionaire now. Uh, Cause he told me, so after I heard about Bitcoin, he goes, you know, when you get back home, uh, send me a message and I'll send you some Bitcoin. I'll show you how it works. So I go home and uh, we get on the chat and he's like, okay, so here's where you go to get a wallet. So I go there, open the wallet. There's actually a blockchain.info. Took me two seconds. I was like, whoa, that's pretty fast. And he goes, okay, give me the address. And then all of a sudden three Bitcoins showed up, which, you know, today would be pretty good, right? Yeah. Back then it was $9 <laughs> worth of Bitcoin. And... Uh, can you guys see me or should I stand yeah. in this? I'm trying to avoid standing in the lamps, it's so hot. Maybe I should, maybe I can stand back here. Oh, that's not bad, okay. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you stand right here, it's like a microwave, that's all I know. <laughs> I was just like. So uh, he sent it to me and <laughs> he's really smart. He goes, I go, so what do I do with this now? And he says, uh, well, I've got a bookstore where I sell books about gold. And uh, the book's $9, so why don't you send me back those three Bitcoin and buy the book? So I, he, I go, how? He goes, here's the address. I go, okay, send him the three Bitcoin. He goes, now you got a book. And I'm like, wow, that was pretty amazing. But it was also incredibly smart. He didn't even give me one Bitcoin. No. What a cheap bastard. 
And I was talking to him even at the time, and he's like, oh yeah, I've been mining this since it started. So he's got like, I don't know, a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Super smart guy though, narco capitalist. He spoke at well, Narco Poco, I think, a couple, like, yeah. way back. Yeah, he did. And uh, so that's how I got into Bitcoin. So that was 2011. Oh, and by the way, there's one person here. I, I, so I wrote about the dollar vigilante. I said, I just found out about this thing. So this is a few weeks later. I looked into it. I was like, oh, this is, this could be real. This could do something. So I wrote about it, and I wrote in the Dollar Vigilante, and I said, this could be the next big thing, Bitcoin at $3. And uh, there's a guy named, here named Hiko from uh, Africa or something, and uh, he bought a bunch. He comes every year and reminds me because I didn't buy any <laughs> <laughs> when I recommended it. And the reason why, it was almost impossible. So the only way you could buy any Bitcoin in 2011 was to do a wire transfer to Japan to a, to a trading card site for Magic the Gathering trading cards called Mount Gox for short. And I was just like, ugh, I'm not doing that. One of my larger regrets of my life, obviously. <laughs> Although I have to say, if I had bought, I don't know, $5,000 worth of Bitcoin at the time, which would be like, I don't know, I can't even do the math, $50 million or something, I'd be dead right now, I'm pretty sure. Because I would have, and I wouldn't have done anything I've been doing. Because I know how I was back then. I would have just been partying, and uh, why well, work hard? I, I'm like a, so super rich. So in a, in a good way, I didn't buy at the time. I actually started buying when it was around $100, $150, and I really bought a lot when it was around uh, 350 to 700 So... It's kind of interesting to look back at the past of it, because I was only, for me, 12 years ago. Bitcoin only started 14 years ago. And to look at all the things that have happened since, it's incredible. I think a lot of the times we forget about it, how incredibly fast things happen nowadays. And Raf mentioned that chat GPT, like just in two months, 100 million users. Um, things are just speeding up faster and faster. And there's going to be a lot of opportunities because of that as well. But it's incredible how, <laughs> how, uh, how fast this all happened. And if you would have told me in 20, it was really around 2013 and then to 2015 that I really got into it. And by then I, I snuck on to CNBC and Fox News and Bloomberg pretty much one time for each. And then I exposed the Federal Reserve, and they, they, they're like, cut the camera, cut the camera, and I never invited back. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but if you would have told me in 2013 that Bitcoin would go to like $60,000, and every, every major financial player in the world would be into it by 2021, basically, which is when it about, it's really got going. I wouldn't have believed you. And if you would have told me all the things that's happened since then, I wouldn't have believed you. It's happened so fast. But part of my point is, it hasn't even really started yet. It's quite incredible. Yeah. And we're gonna be rich. In so many ways, it really hasn't. It's incredible. and. You know, you look at what kind of happened. It was basically just Bitcoin until 2017. I also recommended Ethereum at $2, by the way. I also didn't buy it at $2. I'm kind of an idiot. But you know what it was? I was just busy doing my thing. I was busy with the Dollar Vigilante. I'm like, oh, that looks good. I'm going to tell my people about that. I was so busy doing all this stuff, speaking at conferences, telling people that I never got around to buying it until quite a bit later. But if you look at it, it was really in 2017, it was really just Bitcoin and some people had heard of Ethereum. Bitcoin went to 20,000, uh, then it came all the way back down to 3,000, and then all these other coins came out. And we're talking, as you know, thousands of coins. So that was a bizarre period of time too. And we've, <laughs> I remember like Denta coin. It was like a, one of the top coins, and it was a coin you could use with dentists. 
It was like the stupidest <laughs> idea I've ever heard. Actually, there's stupider ones. But uh, we kind of went through this weird period there where people are trying, you know, people are trying different things. And we went through such a weird period over the last couple of years, really, where all of a sudden, all this leverage started coming in and things like Binance and FTX and every, it turned into a big gambling casino. And there was things like Luna. And so this is quite interesting because last, yeah, last year, uh, that's when Luna collapsed. I think it was around May or June or something. And here's a funny story for people who are like, oh, I, I got killed in the crypto market last year. I did too, by the way, but I had two massive trades where I made uh, quite a bit of money last year as everything crashed. Can you guess the two coins where I made basically a fortune on? Luna. Yeah, so I, I can hear you. You got it right, some people. Luna and FTX is where I made my most money last year. <laughs> and the Luna one was hilarious. I was sitting there, and the Crypto Vigilante guys, who, if you guys are into crypto and you don't get it, you're insane. They're, the, they're basically the OGs. Raph doesn't even really tell you who he is. He, I remember hanging out with him in Mexico City in like 2013 or 2014 at a Bitcoin event. And he was the exact same way as he is now. He was just in my face like, this could be the future, man. You got to get into this, man. <laughs> and uh, he was hanging out with people who were all there when Satoshi was doing all this stuff. And they're all now basically working for the Crypto Vigilante. They all go by fake names. <laughs> you <can> see. <laughs> they all go by fake names because they don't want anyone to know who they are. It's like Mr. A, Mr. W, Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. Z, Mr. P. I think I, uh, Mr. E, he actually spoke here, you don't even know who he is. I actually don't know who most of them are. I've never met them in person, but Raph's like, these guys are OGs. And I could just tell that they were. So, why did I say all that? Oh, so Luna. Luna. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. So, oh yeah, so the Crypto Vigilante guys wrote about a month and a half before Luna collapsed, and they said they're doing a algorithmic stablecoin, and pretty much mathematically, this thing cannot work. It will go into a death spiral at some point. So I paid attention to that. I was like, oh, that's very interesting information from these OG guys who know everything. Then Luna went from, I forget the price, like $100 to like $50, and $50 to $25, and I'm just like, whoa. And they're like, it's happening. And I'm like, the death spiral? And they're like, yeah, this thing's going to like 0 .00000001. And I was like, holy cow. So I actually waited till it got down to like a dollar. And I started buying a little bit. And I'm like, and the thing just kept going down. And I was sitting there one night, and my wife, probably doesn't remember but I remember she came into my office it was like 11 at night and she's like what's going on like let's get to bed and I was like this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity just let me sit here for another hour or two I'm gonna make a fortune on this so it goes down to like point point zero one cents I start I buy a little bit more and I'm like is it really gonna go like how, how far could it even go and then it's like point zero 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 one and I buy a little bit more and I'm like What's the, I look into it, and the max that Binance would allow was 0 .00000001. And then it said, it can't go any lower than that. that, that that's cents, by the way. So it's like a, a millionth of a cent. And I could just see this algorithm, it, it, people were panicking out of it. So the algorithm itself had to keep minting more UST and Luna coins to keep the UST stablecoin at a peg. So you, I'm just sitting there at like 0 0.001 cents, million new coins come on the market, uh, market sell, market sell. I'm, I'm like, holy cow. I took out my phone at one point, I'm like, I can't believe this. I was even telling the uh, crypto vigilante guys. And they're like, I'm like, I'm gonna buy a bunch at like point, a millionth of a cent. And they're like, you're crazy, ha ha. But they didn't really think about it. And so then it gets there. And like it went like no bid for a bit. And I'm like, okay. And 
the funny thing on Binance was you couldn't, they have all these limits. I found out every limit of Binance that night. <laughs> One of the limits is you have to have a minimum of a $10 US order, I think, or something like that. I, I forget the exact details. So I had to actually time, I'm like, okay, so at one millionth of a cent, how many tokens can I buy that it's at least $10 so the trade goes through? And then they have a token limit that you can only buy like a, a billion tokens at one transaction. And I had to like nail the sweet spot right there at like a millionth of a penny. But I did. And, and so I'm sitting there and I was just buying $10 worth of Luna for like 100 million Luna tokens, which one day earlier was worth Ten billion dollars. I was buying for ten ten dollars. So I'm like ten dollars, and, and I I couldn't figure out how to automate it. So I had to just sit there, and it would freeze every now and then, it would crash. I'm like, come on, come on, because I knew actually, because I know the crypto market. And this is sort of to my point about how you have to kind of know what's going on to take advantage of these opportunities. I knew that at some point they'd have to turn off that automatic sell thing that was going on. Um, and I could actually see everyone talking about it. They got, they're all like, turn it off, turn it off. I just lost everything. And uh, I was just laughing. You know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that sucks for you. But, but I knew once they turned it off that if it kept trading, people would probably bid it way, way, way higher up once the selling had stopped. So it stopped right around then. And then the, they closed it. They actually delisted it from Binance. And I'm like, okay, close the computer and go to bed. <laughs> And I wake up and I'm like, oh, if they delist it and never list it again, I'll, I'll, I won't make anything. But then a day later, they're like, okay, we're gonna list it again. They, they turned it off and it opened up about 500X from where I was buying it at. So I made 50,000% in about one day <laughs> on Luna. <laughs> so then, <laughs> then FTX happened. <laughs> So I'm on crypto Twitter and on our chat boards for the Crypto Vigilante and, and these rumors start flying. This is like November. FTX is it's a scam, it's a fraud, it's gonna go down. And you know, everything had been crashing the whole year. So I was like, man, even just on the speculation of this, it's probably gonna go down. So I start highly leveraged shorting FTX. One day later, it's from $27 to like $2 in like one day and I had a leveraged trade on it. So. I, my big, two biggest trades were FTX and Luna. It's just too funny. So anyway, so we have this whole crazy period and now it seems like we're at the end of this bear market now. The Crypto Vigilante guys are about 95% sure that this is the bottom. Now, there could be, there's so many things that can collapse at any moment right now. The US stock market, the US dollar, uh, any other fiat currency, uh, most of the banks, uh, just about everything's on the verge of collapse. So if that happens, that can actually really hurt crypto, but it might not. But my point is that unless something absolutely insane happens, uh, that we're probably at the bottom of the crypto market right now. So my point of this is that I think a lot of people in the last few years, because it's amazing, like how, did, how is Dogecoin still in the top 10 points? <laughs> like, come on. Like, people are so stupid. Now, Elon Musk, like, I like Dogecoin. It's the oh. shittiest coin you can ever imagine. It's shitty on purpose. They did it as a joke, and they're like, let's make this as shitty as possible to have a joke. And then Elon Musk, like, yeah, I really like it. That should be what everyone uses. Like, whoa. So painful. But... So many people got wiped out in the last few years who were all playing those stupid games. Not to mention the NFT market, all those sort of things. Now, there is some good things about NFTs, but people were just buying like anything for like a million dollars at the, at the, at the top. <clears throat> Most of those people have been wiped out and that's actually what true capitalism does. See, if this all happened in banks or in some other industry, it'd all be bailed out by the central banks and the governments and nothing would ever get fixed. So FDX would still be there, Luna would still be there. They'd just be shoveling money in to like prop it up. But in a free market, which the crypto market basically still is, they just get all wiped out. So they're all wiped out. Like uh, Sam Bankman fraud is, you know, living in his parents' house, which is pretty interesting. 
with his, uh, what was it? Two billion dollars worth of bail that he didn't have to pay. He paid off every politician, but he's basically wiped out. Uh, then you have the guy ran Luna. He's kind of on the run. Uh, then you have uh, the Three Arrows Capital guy. I heard they just started a new exchange. It's crazy, but uh, they mostly all got wiped out, and they should have got wiped out. So that's the beauty of actual market, the free markets, is at, at least at some point, all the right people get destroyed and all the stupid people who didn't look into anything and they just heard from a friend to buy Luna, they get wiped out too. That's good. That's a, it's like a washing. It's like a <laughs> baptism. It's like, you know, if you're that stupid or that, you know, whatever, fraudulent or whatever it is, you're going to get wiped out. And the people who are left standing will own a bigger share of the market after that. So it's an incredible time. So we're at the beginning of another pro probable bull market, but now in the next few days, weeks, months, maybe years, most fiat currencies are gonna collapse. Most banks are gonna collapse. Most governments are probably gonna collapse. So it's interesting times. Like we could end, and they're genociding most of the world right now. They haven't even really started World War III yet, but they will. So there's no way to predict the future at this point. There's just no way. But if crypto survives it all, and if there's still enough people alive at the end, <laughs> that's really where it's at, then it should go much, much, much higher. But now, we're gonna see a lot of the real shitty coins, which a lot of people think are good, get wiped out. And you might be surprised to hear that Bitcoin's kind of a shitty coin, the BTZ version of it. And Ethereum's kind of a shitty smart contract platform in many ways. You know what might take its place in just the next few years? Monero might take Bitcoin's place. It's actually outperformed every other cryptocurrency, I believe. You, is this true? Have you looked into this uh, in the last year? Every other cryptocurrency, Monero. Yes. But I think it's actually been the best performing cryptocurrency in the last year. That's huge. And we've been talking about it since 2014. A lot of people don't realize Monero's been around since 2014. And a lot of those Monero guys were old BTC guys who realized that BTC had some problems. And number one problem was it's not really fungible. So they started building that almost 10 years ago. And it's now been the best performing coin in the last year. Every dark market now uses it. No one uses Bitcoin on a dark web market unless they're incredibly stupid. That's how Bitcoin started. So we could see Monero take out Bitcoin in the next couple years. And as far as Ethereum, there's a smart contract platform that is so next level that Raf calls it alien technology. And I have no idea how it really happened because it's so unbelievably incredible, called Dero. <laughs> and, and where do we live right now? We live in a world where most of the governments are bankrupt. They're all on the verge of collapse. And as they go down, they try to steal whatever is left of their tax slaves. They're tracking it. Everything's like everything I've been talking about and Max Egan's been talking about for the last 10 years and warning about is all happening now. The digital IDs, the, the smart cities, the the 15 minute cities, the, uh, like all of it's happening now. And World War Three. And so your average person, now most of them are, are really dumb. Like, and it's not even all their fault. Most people in the Western world have been drinking and bathing in rat poison all of their lives. And this rat poison actually turns off your third eye and basically turns off your brain. It makes you docile. And they're most, you know, nobody 